Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of the Autism and Doctor Who series. Uh, today I'm joined with James and, and Jen has autism and he uh, very much likes Doctor Who because as, as we can see from the background, uh, the doctors run into him, uh, as we said before. <laughs> uh, thanks James. Hi Mason, thank you for having me. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to be here and talking about Doctor Who and autism. Like yeah. For me anyway, it plays hand in hand. Yeah. Yeah, so do, 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 do you maybe want to talk a little bit about like getting diagnosed, or, uh, getting diagnosed with autism first? Yeah, no problem. So I was diagnosed way back when, when I was two years old. Uh, I was diagnosed because um, we had a health visitor come round when I was two and she noticed that I wasn't hitting my developmental milestones. So, for example, um, that I was not walking like compared to other kids at the st same stage, uh, I was very like isolated, like playing with other kids. Uh, so she then sent me, recommended my mom take me to the doctor for a diagnosis, and uh, that's when I got my autism. And I also had dyspraxia as well at the same time. Yeah, yeah. So you, so you, you would have known what Ryan was uh, with Ryan um, um, St Clair then in Doctor Who. Oh, it's so brilliant to see. I, I think it's the first ever time I've seen dyspraxia displayed like on screen or mentioned on screen. So it was like really nice. And uh, especially in Doctor Who, which I know plays a massive part uh, from what I, I can see with people with autism in the autism community, it's just sort of developed into a safe space, really, and like a common ground for uh, autistic people. Yeah, I think it is like it's very accepting, isn't it, with, with autism and and different people. I didn't realise there were so many people out there who like Doctor Who and have I have autism too. So it's it's just as good, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Like it's nice to like. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know why why about Doctor Who that makes it so relatable to people with autism. Um, like I've watched it since I was growing up uh, before it came back in 2005 I think uh, one of the first episodes I watched was with my dad um oh, what was it so Sylvester McCoy the Dalek episode uh, mm -hmm. with Davros I think it was it begins with R I can't remember the name but that <laughs> uh but that was one of the first episodes I watched and then uh growing up uh we got more and more videos and got the classic uh, DVDs as well when DVDs came out uh, and then when it came back in 2005 just so happy because it was back every Saturday night uh, can't thank Russell T Davis enough for, for bringing it back and I'm looking forward to his new era of Doctor Who and then uh, I think recently I think because of uh, I think more recently because of me going to comic cons and things and then TikTok as well found more people with Doctor Who and then it just so it happens that just by looking at them, they also make autism videos on there as well. So, so no, it's really lovely being part of the Doctor Who community, but and also the autism, which tend to go hand in hand. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's lots of arguments though, in, uh, in Doctor Who community. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, especially especially if you ask who's your favourite Doctor, and, uh, especially recently with Joe Diz era. But I think like the true fans are the ones really like it's okay to have an opinion. We can like and dislike what we want, but I think. At the core of it, everyone just loves the show for what it is. Like it's longest yeah. running look, yeah. so sci fi show in the world. I can't believe it's 16 next year. I'm looking forward to what it brings. Yeah, it, like it doesn't, it doesn't, it hasn't, it, it's good that it's been around this long because normally shows like everyday show, live shows you watch or series, they always, they always come to an end, don't they? All, all, all these type of shows, like. Uh, for example, off my mind, you've got the Vampire Diaries, Team Wolf, and those kind of shows that um, go go on, and like you don't want them to end. But um, in a way, you could possibly class Doctor Who as a soap in a way because it, it never stops. <laughs> um, yeah, although, no, exactly. <laughs> although it's not on every day, uh, it was a bit disappointing. <laughs> I know, yeah, especially like. Well, we're in the moment, like room between specials, and you have to wait months between the next episode. Uh, yeah. But no, I think you're right. Like, imagine growing up, like back in the sixties, when it was every week for a whole year. When it was back when they were continuing like serials, uh, that would have been amazing. Especially like seeing Daleks for the first time in black and white, William Hartnell, uh, and then just experiencing growing up, which is why it's great. I think that so many people 
now are going back and watching the classic ones or they've grown up with Christopher Eccleston's Doctor that I'd, hopefully they'll, they'll never cancel it again because <laughs> I think it's got too much of a fan base. I think, the, 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 I think like, I, I spoke to other people about this and it's always come up because um, as, as most of the people know that the, view, the viewers are, has massively reduced with the current era of Doctor Who. Um, and this is why they bring Russell T Davis back because they, they bring Russell T Davis back because he was it, it was the best when he was there, like with David Tennant um, and stuff and Chris Wilkinson. Um And I don't know he might have done a few stories with Matt Smith, but I, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, but when he was there, it, it just it, it was very good episodes and um, Jodie's episodes are good. Like yeah. there, there was some, but there's not. There's none you're going to be remember uh, uh, like yeah. like uh, like if series her first series I don't remember many episodes from it really because there wasn't much of a yeah. story. Um, no, I'm the same. Like I think the later ones with Jodie, uh, I think when they went back to it being like bringing in classic characters or bringing popular characters from other eras, like bringing back uh, uh, Kate Lethbridge Stewart uh, when they brought back Captain Jack for his episodes as well and like because it's all seen the first series as um just it didn't really acknowledge like the whole previous 50 odd years of Doctor Who but then they thought oh wait a minute <laughs> we should probably do that because it, it wouldn't have mattered if you never watched the show before you can just watch Jodie <laughs> I think that, that's what they tried to do <laughs> yeah exactly um, it was like a new reboot wasn't it yeah but I, like I, I think, yeah, well, we should be getting more episodes. Hopefully, with Russell T Davis, it'll be more episodes in a year, and rather than just one yeah. time in a year, or like you have your festive episode, like yeah. Christmas, Christmas Eve time, and you have one season. It'd be nice to have more, or, or, or like, or have different parts in a year or something, um, or even just have, yeah. even if you're just doing a series in a year, have a, have a maybe a Doctor Who spin-off show, or maybe going on Disney Plus or something, um, like that, but. I always feel like if this next series don't work out, um, then there's a problem. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean, because think about it. Think back to 2005 or, or a couple of years after it came back. You had a whole like universe or universe of like Doctor Who shows you had. Torchwood, you had Sarah Jane Adventures, you had like Doctor Who exhibitions up and down the country. Um, pretty sure there was a stage show at some point. I didn't get to see that. I vaguely see pictures of it on YouTube and that like, had the book books and things. Like it was like the golden era, if you like, but uh, hopefully I, I have faith in Russell. Like after seeing what he's done since then, like, he's an amazing writer and I'd love to read his book at some point. And I think, I mean, I just can't wait to see what he does with the 60th next year. I think it's in like, I mean, Stephen Moffat's 50th was, was amazing. So I love that. But the 60th, yeah. is, I can think it's going to be the next level. Yeah, they have to do something, don't they? Like, I don't know if they can bring them. Um, well, the thing is, like, if they want to bring out the older doctors, is it? Yeah. Um, it's a bit difficult because the doctor doesn't age, does he? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, so. Like, like Matt Smith, for example, doesn't look like he's aged much since he's last in Doctor Who. Not at all. Um, <laughs> Martha Jones, yeah, Martha Jones either. Um, uh, she, she doesn't. And Donna, like David has. He, I, yeah. he, even in the 50s, you saw he would have aged. You could see that in him. Um, but I think he's got one more go, David. Um, I think so. David Tennant. One more go. Um, I Lots of people have said about doing maybe a little series instead of just one episode for the 60th. Um, that'd be nice, which it would, wouldn't it? Like, it'd be, I think it'd be better, like, it would go on for longer as well, exactly. And you can never have too much Doctor Who, in my opinion. Like, I'm looking forward to the Centenary special, Jodie's final one as well, uh, just because it's nice to see that they've brought back Ace and uh, Tegan, so it'll be interesting to see. Find, after all these years seeing classic, I mean, you had Joe Grant and Sarah Jane Adventures, to be fair, and then Sarah Jane herself. So it was just nice to see classic companions again. And you never know, maybe there'll be a classic doctor in there. Yeah, I, I think it was um, it was one of the last ones, wasn't it? Um, with Ace and, and Tegan. Um, yeah, Jodie's final one, isn't yeah. I think it's in. And Kate Stewart as well. <laughs> yeah. Again, with Kate Stewart coming back, 
I thought it was quite irrelevant in a way when she came back in, in Flux, for example. Yeah. Because she didn't do much. She just like with Matt Smith and that yeah. and Peter Capaldi, the doctor's like always in uh like Kate Kate actually had demands, like she she was yeah. the doctor what to do a little bit. And she would just listen to what the doctor was saying. Do you want me to do this? Do, do you want me to go there? So it wasn't the same. Um <laughs> I know what you mean. It's sort of like she took a back seat in Flux, just like like you say, it's like seeing her, if you look back to Matt Smith and Peter Capaldi's episode, she was the chief scientific officer at UNIT, but Flux, it's just like she's been fired from UNIT by the Grand Serpent, uh, yeah, <laughs> just yeah. just hanging around. Like <laughs> he, he was another irrelevant character as well, <laughs> the Grand Serpent. I know, I, I thought they were going to build up, like he's going to be like a new regeneration of the Rani or something. Or I know we've got Sasha as the master, and he's brilliant, and uh, Gemma Redgrave is brilliant as Kate but I just thought I agree like Grand, I thought he was going to be I don't know it would have been nice to see a male version of the Rani <laughs> if they can do a female version of the Master why not it is um, yes that's not, I need to um, do new things I think um, I know Doctor Who's a bit like they bring back people I think from the 60th yeah. after the 60th it'd be nice just to move on um, well, yeah. you can always bring back companions and stuff, but you, you like that's all we're seeing now, like for quite a lot of things, aren't we? Um, yeah, onwards from the, the revival and stuff, like you, you see characters coming back and uh, and stuff, but it would be nice to have new monsters as well. And uh, as, yeah, as we're used to the same ones. <laughs> oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> Scary as well. We need more scary ones, I think. I know, like Stephen Moffat creating the Weeping Angels is one of those brilliant things to happen to Doctor Who, and then the silence as well. So I know what you mean. They need like a new recurring like villain to Doctor Who. That'd be really good. Yeah, they need like the silence of Vash and Narada. I wouldn't mind them coming back. Yeah, that'd be uh, good. Um, the Silurians, um, been nice them to come back as well. Um, yeah, cause they, I thought the Sea Devils were really good, but I thought they'd, I don't know, see, I like Legend of the Sea Devils, I thought it was a good episode, but I thought, there's, I thought it felt too much of a filler between either the Daleks and the Centenary, like, I'm glad they brought them back, but it just felt like there's no resolution with the storylines that makes it. Yeah, I wasn't my most favourite episode, um, no. like, they come to sea devils and they didn't go out to sea. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. um, and they, and then if you say that to maybe the writers, they'll say that we had a sea monster in the sea for the, throughout most of the episode. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, and you think, what's the point of it? Like, no, no. it didn't do anything. <laughs> it just swam down no. in the river, didn't it? Exactly. If you looked at, uh, what was the other one with Matt Smith's pirate episode? I can't remember. I'm terrible with oh, episode yeah. names. The, it was the siren, I think it was. I, I, that was it, yeah. That's a good the one. siren actually did something. It kidnapped like Rory and Brian and then took them to the hospital ship. So it was good, but I'm pretty sure the sea, big sea monster, nothing really happened to it, did it? I think, did it just stay in the ocean? It's just still there wandering about. I think so. It didn't <laughs> do much, did it? No. <laughs> like, uh, that's a thing, you know, like, you get all really excited about these episodes, like Easter episode, Christmas episode. Yeah. Not Christmas episode, and it's a bit disappointing there's no Christmas episode for a while, but hopefully that's no, back. No. <laughs> uh, um, but, but yeah, like, the music as well is gone as well, isn't it? Like, Murray Gold, no, no Murray Gold with Jodie. Um, so, oh, Murray Gold's amazing. I love his music. Yeah. <laughs> so, we don't get any, I say, I don't enjoy the music now. It's not as good, I don't think. As Murray no, Gold. I agree. Like especially with Murray Gold's music, I've got most of the CDs from like his era, and I, I've never seen a CD from. I mean, I saw CDs from Matt's era as well, but not recently with Jodie's. Like it's they had the proms as well, didn't they? With Murray Gold conducting, which was amazing. Back oh yeah. yeah back. And I'd love to have gone to one of those. Yeah, it'd be nice to have someone back or something. Yeah, um, uh, hopefully he's back with Russell because I can imagine Russell would want his old team back. Yeah, I think they're doing back in Wales, I reckon. Um, like, yeah. like um, back in Cardiff where they were doing it beforehand. But yeah, it's going to be, is it very interesting? It's going to be good. I am very excited about what's going to happen. Um, 
yeah and stuff um and and yeah like like do you have a favorite doctor at all that you I, I do and it's the same as most other people but just david tennant i mean a lot david tennant and matt smith to be fair mm. yeah how about you yeah i, I i'm about the same i did like christopher Eccleston, no I, um Eccleston was good um, yeah i'm um, not as keen on Jodie jo- jo- Whittaker and Peter Capaldi. Um, yeah. Like, Peter Capaldi was... Uh, it, it took me a while to get to, um, I suppose, him, like, 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 really like him like I did with Matt and David um, for yeah. me. Yeah. Oh, I'm the same. I think it was his last series that I really got into him when he like, started acting. Like, Don't get me wrong, Peter Capaldi is an amazing actor, but they made him too angry for his first was he there for three series first one or yeah first one or two series and then and one of my then one of my favorite episodes is uh not the end of time is it, is it? the one with missy and the master i'm terrible with episodes names sorry. oh yeah i can't remember an episode either uh name but i know what you mean like yeah, when they brought i love Sim that back. episode yeah and seeing him play off against Michelle Gomez was brilliant. And obviously you had the return of the Mondas Cybermen, seeing how the Cybermen started, which I thought was a fantastic story. Yeah, that was a pretty good story. Um, I think he was actually going to regenerate that episode. Um, it did uh, look like it. Um, yeah, but he, he didn't because like, they wanted to wait for a Christmas special or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is why it's going to be nice this year because there's not going to be a Christmas special for once. I know they're good enough, yeah. but normally they regenerate Christmas time, don't they? And um, they do, yeah. So, yeah, it's the first, isn't it the first first one since Eccleston? I think that uh, we're going to have a regeneration story in the autumn rather than wait till Christmas or New Year. Yeah, it's going to be interesting if there even is a Christmas and New Year episode this year, though. Um, that's a good point we don't know what's going to happen it's, it's literally up in the air you still don't know who the 14th doctor is <laughs> I think that's good though like by the time this goes yeah. out we might know but um, yeah but, but yeah I don't want to know I, I'd rather the way I'd rather I just, it, it happen um, yeah which yeah, people watch it more I don't know if that happened <laughs> no I agree with you like it's nice that they haven't made an announcement it, like, it might be like the old days where they did you just saw the new actor and it'd be really really nice to see and hopefully there's no leaks or anything beforehand or they announce it like a few like J- jody i didn't like the way they announced jody as the next doctor because they announced it during wimbledon it's like that's was so really random <laughs> just... well let's hope it's not wimbledon this year <laughs> i know exactly it's like i think they should wait to autumn they've obviously they finished filming it so i'm sure people can wait what it's may now it's only a few more months to stay <laughs> well who knows i i, I don't know where like it has to be a good actor though whoever it is yeah um probably one has worked with russell uh t davis um i reckon yeah oh i agree i wouldn't be surprised if it's someone for bits of sim which was a lovely series but i, I can see someone from there yeah like yeah he would have to know him very well like um like, I don't, I don't want um, David Turner as the fourth Doctor. Um, no, it wouldn't make any sense. Like, they, they, <laughs> it, it, it could happen because there's no rule that the Doctor can't go back to a former face, but he would have to be a yeah. completely different character than he was as a tenth Doctor. Yeah, and I think it would be too safe, really, if they went back to David Tennant, because I know lots of people are fans of David Tennant, but the Doctor is all about change, and I don't... <laughs> Yeah. yeah, I mean, I've got nothing wrong with what they did with Capaldi because he was playing a completely different character. Like, he wasn't the Doctor, but a Doctor playing an, another version of the Doctor. I don't know, it just seems odd to me. Who knows? It might be an actor that's been in Doctor Who before because... Um, yeah, they're known for that, aren't they? Um, yeah, with Karen Gillan, Freema, Ag- Agamemnon, and... Yeah, they've had loads of... Uh, Joe Arando, she played, like, Martha's mum and then the Empress of the Ragnos. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but it's going to be like like the time that we don't think it will. Um, that I think um, because not too like to do that, don't they? Like, yeah, they don't like to pick popular actors at that. Exactly, which I think works quite well because I couldn't see. 
like a really big because Doctor Who makes their actors really like I don't think like David Tennant I was massive in like, Casanova and Harry Potter beforehand I think until Doctor Who he wasn't that much on a big stage and mm. same with Christopher Eccleston really like he had roles before that but I think most people know him from Doctor Who yeah he was in the Aim Bird, wasn't he? Like the ultimate. Yeah, scene. that was good. That was a good scene. Yeah, he's he's pretty good. I think um, it, he does well. Um, Chris Wilkinson was that first series that he did. I, I enjoyed that series. Um, especially with the Dardic. That Dardic episode was really good. That was funny. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was a good one. I think maybe, I wonder if they're going to tease it, because I don't know, if, are you listening to Doctor Who Redacted on BBC Sounds? No, but I I, I, I see episodes, like, getting released and stuff. Yeah, I think, because it, it's different, because I thought it was just going to be a Doctor Who podcast, but, uh, I mean, it is a podcast, but it's more uh, a fictional podcast, if that makes sense, and it feels like they're building up to something, because, not to spoil it for anyone who's, who hasn't listened to it yet, but in the latest episode, they brought back... Uh, a character who haven't haven't seen for ages which i thought really worked really well so i wondered if they got their own little mystery trail going on and they released the episodes weekly so i'm wondering if that's leading up to either a reveal of the 14th doctor or some do the 60th or the centenary yeah uh, knowing doctor who we will find out we will know who the doctor is beforehand like yeah. um <laughs> but yeah i don't, I don't think we've waited this long have we Exactly. Uh, yeah. We've waited longer before, like what Jodie was announced to, yeah, like nine months or something, I think it was. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? It's a long time. Yeah, it's a very long time. Um, um, yeah, so I think it's, it's going to be, it's going to be very interesting, isn't it? Oh, definitely. Yeah, I'm just glad that Doctor Who's back on TV and that, I mean, the big Finnish audios are brilliant as well. I like listening to them. Yeah. It's quite good because they give new stories to classic Doctors and companions and that like, Torchwood continued on there, although I've not listened to any of the Torchwood ones yet. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think it's going to be pretty cool. Um, I, I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, like... Um, a last few things, uh, because I think we've had a really good chat, Autism and Doctor Who, yeah. haven't we, James? Yeah, that's um, no, been brilliant. Um, but, d like, maybe just say about, um, like, um, what, why um, autism really involves around Doctor Who? I'd say that, for me personally, I think, when I watch Doctor Who, it's a form of escapism, like, going on all these different adventures throughout time and space with a character as um, welcoming and inclusive as the Doctor. But I think it's brilliant what they've recently done with the Doctor and uh, Yaz's storyline. Uh, I think it just takes you away from reality. Like, it just shows that no matter if you're a man, woman, what disabilities you have, like if you're with the Doctor, it's a safe space, I think. The overall, the Doctor Who, the Whovian community, I think like they're very welcome and inclusive space. Yes, there are some like discussions and debates about oh, which Doctor do you like? And uh, it's with any show, really. There's some good episodes and bad episodes. Uh, it just be, makes me feel at ease, doesn't make me feel anxious. Uh, I think the writing's really good as well. Uh, that it sort of like Doctor Who is what got me into working in TV really because I've loved what, watching the behind the scenes stuff on Doctor Who and now all these years later I'm working in the industry which I'm so grateful to be in uh yeah I just think I think as well with like the Doctor Who like games for example I played a lot of those growing up uh, I think it's uh good that they've expanded into different technology uh, Time Fracture as well was brilliant. Uh, not to plug it, but I definitely really recommend it if you ever get a chance to go go there. Uh, I think that's definitely the next level uh, that is really immersive. I think it just immerses you and just takes you away from your worries and anxiety, really. Yeah, there, there, there are some pretty good things going about now. Like I think they've probably been better to experience. But yeah. um, I haven't been Time Fracture, but it looks it looks fun. Um, and, it's amazing. And, and 
Yeah, and I think it's a unit base, isn't it? So it, it's all yeah. pretty cool. It's all pretty cool. Um, um, like one last thing, uh, maybe if you can, like two last things actually. If you just want to say yeah. maybe some advice for about autism that maybe you would give out. Um, firstly. Yep. So I'd say never let any disabilities, whether it's autism, get in the way of your goals and dreams in life. Like you are worth as much and your dreams are worth as much as anybody. Uh, you might have extra challenges in life, but if you want something, just uh, try and come up with your own coping strategies like I have. Like I know there's been moments in my life where I've struggled, uh, but I've always like been determined. I, I want to get to where I am. I want to do and not let my disabilities affect me that much. Uh, I acknowledge that there are things I can't do, especially dyspraxia and and things that um that just and to accept help like just because for example recently uh, I found out that you can get a ride access pass to the like Alton Towers and other theme parks and I didn't know that but this is the first year I've used that so there is like extra support out there if you need it. Um, and that just because your disability like just makes you extraordinary, it doesn't make you different. It makes you, I, as the Paralympics say, that, that makes you superhuman. And yeah, just don't let, try not to get down about it. You have some good days and some bad days. It's okay not to be okay, but if you've got a dream, just go for it no matter what. No, I think I've got some really good advice, uh, and I completely agree, Thank James. Um, and finally, um, is there like a quote in Dot Two that really relates to you at all? Um, would you say? Oh, there is. Ah, oh, just going to do a quick Google because I can't remember. It's Matt Smith's final regeneration speech. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If if um always remember when the doctor was me, was that it? Yeah, that's one. Okay. Because I don't. I love that speech uh, where he says, I'll not forget one line of this, not one day, I swear, uh, we'll all change when you think about it. Uh, I just think that's a brilliant thing because we're all, because it is true, like we're all the sum of what we come through. We're here today because of what's happened in the past and that change is good uh, and development is good and that it's, it's okay to, do try different things it's okay to um i completely lost my train of thought there but no it's just yeah it's good you have you should acknowledge and celebrate the things that the uh hurdles you've been through and that uh and that uh you should yeah always celebrate no matter how big or small the achievement and acknowledge where you've been in the past yeah well, i think i i completely agree and i think that quote's really good as well but um, yeah, you. I hope you really enjoyed this, James, because it was really nice talking about autism and Dr. Who with you. Thank you. No, thank you so much for having me. I've really enjoyed it. Uh, uh, yeah, it's been lovely talking about autism and Dr. Who, two things yeah. that I'm really passionate about. Definitely. Me too. Well, thanks, James. <laughs> thank you, Mason. Have a good rest of your day.